Good afternoon. My name is Joan McSween, and we're here today at the Winter Garden Library. It is Monday, December the 11th, 2012. Sir, would you state your name, please? Willis G. Hall. Good afternoon, Mr. Hall. Would you like to share with us some stories of living in Winter Garden? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I was born on August 18th, 1938 in Orange Memorial Hospital. I've been a citizen of Winter Garden for 74 years. Um, my family was in the fruit business, started here in 1910. My grandfather was Gus Hall, who was manager of South Lake Citrus Packing House. He was there for 30 years, and then in 1941, he built his own packing house in Killarney, which was called Gus Hall Citrus Fruits, later sold to the Ergang family called Killarney Fruit Company. I had a, a grandfather on my mother's side was Guyton Brazel, Hall, Guyton Brazel, who was chief of police in Warner Garden. And he was chief of police, I believe, about two years. And during that time, they promoted him to captain and, or to chief. And upon that promotion, two, two deputies got mad with the situation and threatened to kill him. So on a Saturday afternoon, a gentleman by the name of Pee Wee Vining, who was um, pretty much locked up every Saturday morning, and he had told my granddaddy that day he, when he brought him in, you know, when they left the door open for him, he'd just go in and stay in jail. But anyway, he told him that um, the two gentlemen were downtown at the bar, local bar there saying that they were going to kill him. So he kind of ignored it. But there had also been, um, when the um, city commission made him chief of police, Hall Pounds was one of the commissioners, and he had got wind that they were wanting to kill him and shoot his family too, so he put his family in the attic for a period of four or five days until this shooting took place. And he say, stayed downstairs with a shotgun. That's the story that I was told by his family, one of the sons named Herbert Pounds. And um, so anyway, this Saturday afternoon, or well, Saturday night, uh, the police station was behind the First National Bank and they pulled up between Kaplan's grocery and the bank and started shooting. So he got up. He was upstairs and over the jail sleeping, and then Mama stuck her head out the window and looked down the street and saw him and told her daddy, she said, you need to get up and go down there. They're down there shooting and, you know, disturbing the peace. So he gets up and goes goes outside with one of the deputies that was on duty was across the road at the railroad station. He gets in the car and they go around the block and come up beside the car. When they pull up, they shot my granddaddy through the door through the, and hit him in the thigh. He came out of the car, went across the windshield of their, of their car and shot one of them through the windshield. The other deputy that was on duty stepped out of the car and shot the other one. And that's how that particular situation went that became a big talk of the town for many years. But the citrus industry was the biggest change that hit this town and made it what it was. But it also, when Disney came, it took it away. Um, in 1940, I think it was in 1941 or 42, in that time area, all the local packing houses formed a corporation called Warner Gardens Co-op, which was a canning plant. And um, that was formed by seven owners of seven packing houses, with Gus Hall being one of those. South Lake was one, Brit Fruit Company, R.D. King, uh, Roper Growers, Bataglia Fruit Company, and Hella Brothers. And I'm not sure if there were any more, I don't know if that was seven or not, but anyway, it was a total of seven. 
And that became a big um, organization. It, was, um, it made a lot of money, employed a lot of people. And we were known as the Citrus Town. You know, there was more millionaires per capita in this town population-wise than any other town, which was due to the citrus industry. Um, my grandparents, or my grandfather got out of it in 1946 due to this. He'd been in it for 45 years. He came here when he was 30 and retired when he was six, or well, 70. And um, my other grandparent that was the police chief, he moved on, went to Orlando and became or, uh, a motorcycle cop, and then he retired from the Orlando Police Department. Um, before Disney came, I used to hunt out on Disney property quite a bit. And my brother was a, became a surveyor out there when Disney started buying the property, and he found an old tram train in the swamp. And we'd never tell anybody where it was at because we knew they'd come take it out, and who knows what would happen to it. So we just left it there. We, we never told anybody, as far as we know, it's still there. Um, but when Disney came and we had the back-to-back -back freezes in the late 80s, that pretty much destroyed the citrus industry and the real estate became more valuable than the fruit on the trees. And so most of your local fruit growers sold everything and we dwindled down to just about no fruit. So we pretty much, the candy co-op dwindled down and was sold and packing houses were all closed and went out of business. And um, so that's the biggest change that I saw in this town. I, I didn't stay in this town totally all of my life. I moved to Louisiana and came back. I was an employee of AT&T. But the two greatest shockers in my life was to see a company as large as AT&T be the largest company in the world to being just a minor company and to see the citrus in Orange County be one of the largest in the world and become one of the smallest. And that's about the biggest thing I know as far as the town itself. I was not much in school. I didn't um, apply myself. I was more interested in racing cars and that type thing. So when I graduated from high school, I was told I'd be the least successful student in the class and probably in the town. So I was employed at that time through my last two years of high school. I was employed with a company called M&M Welding Shop, which was associated with the citrus industry. We made the Grove choppers and that was used in maintenance of the Grove work. And um, I worked there till I was, after I graduated and the gentleman that owned the business had a son, his name was Larry Mast. He pulled up there one day and this was in 1956, had a brand new car, all new clothes hanging in the back of it. And I said, Larry, where'd you get all that at? Because he was about as poor as I was. And he said, man, if you hire on with AT&T, or at that time, the Western Electric was a subsidiary of AT&T. And I says, what do you mean hire on? He said, well, go over and take a test and they'll hire you if you're mechanically inclined. I said, hmm, I'll go over there. So I did, got hired on and I made a 30-year career of it, and I retired at age 51. So much for being the least successful. But anyway, I really had a, a great career. I had a lot of fun in li by living in this town. I knew the mayor quite well. He and I had a real nice confrontation one time. He had, he, my uncle was Mark Britt, and he owned the Ford Company, was right downtown, and Albert Walker was mayor of the town, but he's also a car salesman for one of Garden Ford, and he owned this Model T fire truck, which had belonged to Oakland back in the 20s. So I was dating my wife, who was June Graves. She was at high school, in school that day, and I was uptown. I said, Albert, 
let me borrow your tea model. He said, okay. He said, what do you want to do? I just want to ride around. I want to garden it. I'll be back in a little bit. He said, great. Go ahead. It's out there in the back of the Ford place. You know how to run it. So I got it. Well, first thing I did was take off to Lakeview High School. And out there we have a square that is surrounded by the school buildings, but you could drive up into that square if you knew how to do it. Well, I drove up there, and a model, if you know anything about a Model T, you can make them backfire. So I drove right up to the school there and started backfiring this thing. I'd back out, circle the school, backfiring it, trying to show off for my wife, or my girlfriend at the time. Well, I made about two loops around, and here come the chief of police with the mayor. Mayor steps out and jumps up on the running board of that thing, won't know what I'm doing. I told him. He said, take the Model T back to town and I'll see you there. I did, and he saw me there. And, um, but we became real good friends, and he was a super nice person. It was just one of those childhood, childish things you do when you're growing up, or trying to grow up. Um, but I got into racing quite a bit, but... I, I realized that that was not a winning situation, and I got out of it and went on and got, and I married June Graves, and we raised a family, and uh, I lived here most of my life. I had to move to Louisiana for two years, but other than that, I've been a citizen of Warren Garden for most of my 74 years, and um, I've enjoyed it. It was a great place to raise a family, and during that time frame, I was lucky enough that if you walked downtown, you knew everybody you could, by first name. They knew you, and it just it made a real nice place to grow up. And then, of course, when Disney came, the whole thing changed, and now you hardly know anybody, and it's a new life. But we do have the new square downtown, which makes it. A lot, but uh, a lot nicer than what it was. So I'm still privileged to live here. That uh, night up in a garden several weeks ago, and I heard a man walking by, obviously not a Winter Garden resident, who said, "This just looks like any Main Street USA," and I thought how right he was. Downtown yeah. is absolutely beautiful. Yes, it is. It is. I know one time, I, well, back to when I graduated from high school and along the same time frame that I pulled the stunt with the T-model, I had brought, bought a new 57 Chevrolet. And I had bought it, special ordered with a racing engine in it. And I had come downtown and turned right onto Main Street and Alan Bland was a barber. And he had a preacher sitting in a barber's chair. And I had some loud mufflers put on this car right when I bought it. And, of course, you know, the buildings were on both sides. When I turned right on, off a of plant on the main, I really took off and made a lot of racket. Well, I didn't realize it, but the preacher that was sitting in the chair flew out of the chair, ran outside with his bib apron still on, to see what it was, and by that I'd already gone by, but he saw me going down the road. So I, I never knew this till later that afternoon. I came back, you know, I had to get a haircut. So I go in and sit down in the chair, and of course Alan Bland, he says, in hey, boy, I want to talk to you. He says, we had a preacher in here a while ago, or earlier today, and he said, it was when you come roaring down through here with that car you got. And he says, you know what he said? He says, the word of God's fast, but that Chevrolet that boy's in is faster. <laughs> <laughs>